I know a lot of people complain that they can't get their heads around what it would be like to be awakened, what Nibbana is like. But we have to remember that's not the duty with regard to Nibbana. We're not here to get our heads around it. We have to realize it, or the word realizing in Pali. Satchikatabhan basically means to verify, to witness. In other words, our goal here is to have a direct experience. We do that by following the path. Now, in some cases, the right view that begins the path is informed by reading and listening. Otherwise, there'd be no point in having Dharma talks like this if it weren't the case. And then there's a discernment that comes from thinking things through. And then the discernment that comes from developing. A lot of times our problem is we want to think things through beforehand and hope that the more we analyze the issue, the more we read and think about things, the more we'll have a good idea of what it's like to be awakened. And sometimes we even hope that that anticipation will lighten our burden. In some cases it helps have a clear grasp of what the Buddha actually taught. But there's only so much that listening and thinking can do for you. The right view has to be developed by developing the qualities of the path. The temptation when you anticipate is to think, well, maybe I can clone awakening. There are even people who say there's the practice is the practice of being awakened. In other words, you think about what the qualities of an awakened person would be and you try to reproduce them in your mind. But it's more like the practice of pretending to be awakened. Because those qualities don't come simply through thinking about them or perceiving them and trying to impose them on the mind. Or to say, well, awakened beings have gone beyond duality, so I'll just go on beyond duality myself. That's just playing with the concepts. You have to put the mind through its exercises, because realizing awakening requires that the mind develops its powers of perception, its powers of attention its powers of reflection, and they're going to be sharp enough only if you work at them. This is what we're doing right now. We're developing mindfulness, we're developing concentration. Instead of focusing on awakening, we're focusing on the breath. Instead of trying to figure out the goal, we keep coming back to the breath. It's through these exercises of mindfulness and concentration that the mind's powers of perception can grow. When the mind is more still, it can see subtle things. When it has a more refined sense of what kind of pleasure can be experienced in the present moment, it also gets a sensitivity to more refined levels of stress and dis-ease, disturbance in the mind. And it's when you can see those things that you're more likely to have the ability to see things that are deeper still inside. So we focus on the path. We don't try to turn the path into the goal. That would be like going to the Grand Canyon. And you've heard that the Grand Canyon is like a big trench in the earth. And so you take a big trench across your path. Now that just makes it impossible to go. You get stuck in the trench. And you don't have to anticipate what awakening is going to be like in order to find it. Right anticipation is not one of the factors of the path. 
question. The Buddha says, try to focus on comprehending your suffering. Again, it may seem like a diversion or distraction, but if you work on developing powers of concentration and mindfulness, and then turn them on understanding how it is that the mind creates suffering for itself, suffering around physical pain, suffering around mental pain, you can see a lot of the levels of fabrication going on in the mind. There's a book someone once did of John Child's Dhamma Talks. And the translation was full of distortions. One of them was a John Child talking about how as you sit down here and your mind gets still, it's like a still forest pool. And all sorts of wonderful and rare creatures will come. Well, those wonderful and rare creatures are actually the mind settling down and focusing on stress and pain. And you'll see all your neurotic reactions around pain, all your unskillful attitudes. And you come to see a lot of things that go on in the mind that go under the radar. Because after all, you've been dealing with pain since before you were born. When you were in the womb, it was bad enough. When you came out, you are suddenly exposed to air, and they spanked you. This is after having gone through that very narrow passageway where you could have died. And you, anyone who's been around babies knows they cry a lot. And there's nothing you can do to explain pain to them. To let them know this particular pain is not going to last forever. Or this particular pain is not going to grow and over, overwhelm your awareness. So babies have to figure pain out on their own in a pre-verbal way. And then as they learn language, then they can start articulating their attitudes towards pain. But they still have a lot of pre-verbal attitudes, and we have carried those with us on into adulthood. And it's only by getting the mind really still and asking the right questions around pain, around your perceptions of pain, that you're going to dig out a lot of these old attitudes. So the path is something you do. It's not something you anticipate. The goal is something you will actually directly experience, regardless of whether you had your head wrapped around it before or not. It's always going to surprise you. So don't worry about getting your head around the goal. Try to get your head into shape where it actually can experience the goal by focusing on what you do, focusing on the path. People look at the factors of the path and wonder, how can this possibly lead to something transcendent? But that comes from just looking at the path from the outside. You put yourself into the path and see what ways your mind gets stretched. See how it gets exercised. See how it develops a sensitivity inside, both to the things that come at it through the senses and through its own processes of fabrication. A lot of the insight is going to be not on things that you're looking at, but you start looking at the way you look at things. In fact, once you've gotten the mind into right concentration, one of the ways of getting insight is to reflect on the concentration. See where it could be more subtle, see where it could be more solid. See where there are variations in the coming and going of levels of stress. So the activity of the path becomes the object that you try to understand. 
So the path functions in two ways. One, it makes you more sensitive. And then two, it pairs a lot of your activities down so you can watch them as they happen. as you're doing them. And you can start questioning that, that doing that you're doing. So remember, the duty with regard to the goal is to realize it. And you get there by following the duty for the path, which is to develop it. And as you develop the path, you find that your mind develops. to the point where it's ready to directly experience the goal. You don't have to pretend that you're awakened. When awakening comes, it's always going to be unexpected. So prepare to be surprised.